Hi, my name is Robert Lee Camp, and welcome to another class on the science of the cards. I'm the author of The Cards of Your Destiny and Love Cards, and these two books alone could tell you almost everything about your life and about what's coming up in your future and what has already happened in your past. Today I'm going to talk about something that um, I've been meaning to talk about for a long time, and that is why is it so hard to predict the winner of competitive events? like the presidential election, uh, people in sports, um, and, and any other competitive activity. And this could also apply to legal matters as well, some of this information. So what I want to say about this, first of all, is the cards are subjective in nature. What you see in the spreads of a person, for example, we're looking at Hillary Clinton's spreads for the year that begins on her birthday in 2016. Um, these cards that show up in her yearly spreads, they're not really what happens to her. It's what's happening to her from her point of view. It, this is a, a subjective system, not objective. So like <clears throat> you might see somebody on the news and you see them uh, in what appears to be a tragedy, but you look in their cards and you see cards of success you should be wary of that because this is telling you what this person is actually experiencing. Sometimes what appears to be a tragedy on the surface is actually something the person wanted. And this goes for death too, like, you know, if you're predicting somebody's uh, when they might die, you have to really get into their head and know what, where are they in their life? Do they want to die? Some people actually want to die. A lot of people want to die at different point, times in their life. And so a person who dies when they want to die would not have a, a card of some kind of a tragedy, you see. So when you're looking at a competitive thing where there's two or more people competing for something, you have to know, you have to really ask some questions and see if you can get into the thing. Because a lot of things like the presidential election uh, is such a huge thing. And there are so many vested interests in, in the outcome of that. Uh, and sometimes I really think, um, I don't know if this is true, but sometimes I think that there's powers out there that are basically like they've already made up their mind about who's going to win. And it's already decided, but we don't know that as the public. We think we have a choice in the matter. So there's one of the questions is, is this a situation where there could be people in the background who actually have control over what happens in the election. I mean, there's been a lot of controversy about that in the presidential elections for the past 12 years that I've been aware of. And we'll have, I imagine we're gonna have more in the future about all kinds of elections. So first of all, who might be in control if it's not? Now, the next thing is, who really wants to win? Ask yourself, who really wants to win? Because sometimes, and I've seen this happen several times, a person that's going for president or for some Olympic event, they actually don't want to win. They don't want to win. They've had enough. They, they want out. Now, you don't know that, and it's not publicized. You have to sort of, you have to dig a little deeper and look and see. So, you know, um, and like you could see, you could see, and here's another thing, like, okay, there's over 20 people now going to run for president uh, next year, <clears throat> okay? Now, some of them know they're not going to win. They just know they're not going to win. But this running for president is a stepping stone to something else. So they might have a lot of, they might have success cards in their spreads, even though they're not going to win the presidency. Because what they're hoping for is just more, um, maybe more uh, uh, in the being in the media and being noticed by people. And maybe they'll get, uh, asked to have a position on the cabinet of the winning president, whatever. So it's a step up for them, but they're not even counting on winning, okay? So these are kind of some of the things you have to know. A few years ago, in the last Olympic, there was a, a Chinese um, competitor who was running the hurdles, and I was asked because he, by a person in China, to predict if he would win or not. Um, and uh, it was like a hundred meter hurdles or something. And he was favored to win and he had done really good four years earlier. And the whole country was behind him. 
But as I was looking at him, uh, I didn't feel like there was uh, a distinct feeling from my part, on my part, that that he didn't really want to win. Like everybody else wanted him to win, but he didn't want to win. So uh, when when the Olympics came around, uh, his cards didn't show one way or the other. Really, didn't show strong or or negative. Okay. It just showed that he would be happy or content with the results of whatever happened. So he he failed in the very first the very first event. He didn't even get into the finals. He didn't even make it to the finals. He tripped and uh, he was out. Now what was interesting was I didn't notice this before, but afterwards I realized I looked I realized that his coach I got his coach's birthday, and his coach had cards of real big disappointment. His coach was very interested in him winning, but he himself really wasn't that into it. He wasn't that into it. So we have to know these things. Okay, so now <clears throat> if you have a, com a competition like maybe two boxers, uh, you can't really do a team because on, on, I mean you can, but it's a lot of people involved and how do you know what people want, you know? I mean, most people, most people on the team are going to want to win, but you just never know. It's just too many people, I think. I mean, it can be done, but it's not easy. But if you have like two people that are running, or maybe three, <clears throat> or maybe four, you, the next step is to look at the connections between these people. Because there are connections, like if I'm running and I'm running against you, and I am your Saturn card, you're probably going to lose just because I'm in your Saturn card. Um, also, if you're moon to me, uh, you're probably going to lose because the person that's in the sun position in a sun moon relationship, the moon person unconsciously supports that person. So all these considerations uh, go into it, go into the presidency, any election and any competition. And this is why it makes it very difficult to, to make predictions about people. You, you can't just look in the book. There is no, I, I won the election or I won the match card. There is success for me personally, <clears throat> what I wanted to have happen, and there is uh, failure of what I wanted to have happen. But this, you can't just say, okay, here's a card that definitely means they're going to win. Having said all that, <clears throat> we all know that Hillary Clinton is, is really... Um, she's going to run. She's running. And she's very much wants to win. I feel like her and Bill, her husband, have had a plan in effect for a long, long time that she would become president and um, she would be the first female president. So there's no doubt in my mind that, that she wants to win. Um, so we can look at her cards. Now, the election itself happens just after her birthday in 2016. And if you look at the planetary period cards, you see a two of diamonds, uh, you see an ace of spades, and you see a nine of clubs and jack of spades. And these cards are, are very inconclusive, you know? I mean, they certainly could mean there certainly could be interpreted that she wins, especially when you look at the rest of the year. Because if you look at her um, long range cards, she has a two of spades long range in her birth card spread. And, th and by the way, this is the last year of her seven year cycle. And she has an eight of hearts result for seven years. This is a very strong card of popularity and becoming in a powerful position. In her ruling card, her first ruling called the King of Clubs, she has an eight of spades long range. And that's very good for uh, success. That means working very hard uh, that year. And then she has a Queen of Clubs long range in her um, Queen of Spades spread, which is her other ruling card. Those are, are not conclusive either, but the Eight of Spades looks really good, okay? If we go to the yearly spreads and we see the Two of Diamonds and Two of Hearts and Mercury, that's when the election is and an Ace of Spades. Those aren't conclusive, but there's really good cards she has an eight of spades long range, eight of hearts Pluto. She's got these double tens in the year coming up. And um, things look like it certainly could be her, okay? Now, 
if she wins the Democratic uh, vote and, and is the Democratic runner for president, and we have a Democrat and a Republican, then we can look at that relationship between those two. You know, Barack Obama, she ran against Barack Obama and she lost uh, for the to become the presidential nominee. Uh, and that's because Barack Obama is a knight of diamonds and he's Saturn to her. And like I said earlier, if, if you're running against somebody who's Saturn to you, you're probably going to lose uh, that contest. And that's how it was. So it'll be very interesting if Hillary does win the Democratic uh, nomination, which she probably will, uh, and then to go on from there and see who she's running against on the Republican side. Because right now, the way the country usually works is like the, we have Democrats for eight years and then the country gets tired of that, whatever that person was all about, and then we, we switch back over to uh, the Republicans and then it goes back again. So I hope this has been informative, informative to you. Just keep in mind that when you're looking at this kind of a con contest, that the cards that they have is the last consideration you have to look at. You have to look at these other things first if you really want to make an intelligent and somewhat accurate prediction about what's going to happen. Thanks for being here and stay tuned for another class in the future on the science of the cards. This is Robert Lee Camp. Take care.